Hi, friends, and thanks for listening to the Fashionista Life brought to you by True Fashionistas, where you can sell, shop, and look fabulous. I'm your host, Jennifer Johnson. And today we welcome into the studio, Sam Meisner. Welcome. Thank you for having me. This is so exciting. It is very cool. So I am just going to share with our audience that you are the co-founder of a local business called Sunnyland Swim. Now I've known you for a long time. I don't even know how old you were when I first met you. You were really young. I was 22. Oh I had my just gosh. turned 22 when I started working for you. <laughs> wow. Wow. So <laughs> what led you down this? What what led up to you starting your own business? I know you've always been very conscious of the earth and you've you've just really embraced all that, but what led you to where you're at today? So I've always been interested in sustainability and fashion. That was actually how I came to work for you mm -hmm. all those years ago was that was, I was specifically looking to work in that industry. Um, and another passion of mine has always been the beach and the environment, um, which the last several years I've worked out on the beach. Between the two things, I've just seen that living in a beach town here, the environment is huge. It's mm -hmm. the reason that everybody comes here. Um, and obviously we've seen it changed dramatically over the last few years. We sure have. <laughs> Lots more traffic. <laughs> and just within swimwear, it was something I felt that I had some skill in that I could bring to the table that could potentially make a difference. Mm -hmm. And you recycle, you use recyclable materials with all of your suits. Is that? Yes. So everything is made out of recycled fishing nets. Uh, it's a fabric called Oh, really? Ekinil. Yes. And it's, it's becoming more popular than people realize. At first I thought everybody would know about it, mm -hmm. but they really don't. Um, it's a company and they, and they use other things too. They use, um, old rugs and oh, there's wow. even people doing it out of plastic bottles and straws and yeah. It, wow. Nylon is, um, an infinitely regenerate, regenerative fabric. Mm -hmm. What that means is basically you can break it down and keep making it over and over again. So you're done with the suit. You could recycle it and make something Combine Correct. a couple of different suits together, perhaps, <laughs> to make... <laughs> That's kind of the idea. These companies know how to break down this material in such a way that it can be recycled time after time mm -hmm. after time if it's done properly, if things don't end up in right. landfill. Wouldn't that be cool? I, maybe you already have it, but where you can say, you know, when you're done with your suit, bring it back here and we can recycle it for you. We are actually working on that now. <laughs> That's just such a cool idea. I mean, it just goes hand in hand with what you're doing. It, it seems like the obvious ne next step, yes. So there's many ways that you could have taken that, you know, I want to do good for my earth. I want to do good for my town. There's many things that you could have done, but why swimwear? It's always something I've had a passion for. Um, as you know, in my time working for you, I probably came in with a bathing suit underneath my clothes <laughs> more often than <laughs> not. <laughs> We're like, are you, did you just come for the beach? <clears throat> are you going to the beach or is it some of each? <laughs> How much sand did I track in <laughs> yeah, the back right. of your store? <laughs> But I mean, it's just, it's like, again, it could have taken you many different ways. I, when I was in college, I started sewing, um, costumes for dancers mm -hmm. and stuff. And I've just always been into kind of stretch fabrics and that element of fashion, I think is more exciting to me. And when it came to swimwear, it was just an obvious choice. Mm -hmm. So now let's start with the creation of the swimsuit. Okay. What do you... How do you create it from your drawing and getting it to the finished product? How does that all look? <laughs> I'm just curious so, in that, that whole process. When we first started out, um, funny enough, I met my business partner uh, mm -hmm. working at True Fashionistas. She was working there too. Um, and eventually I went to live with her, funny enough, in her apartment named mm -hmm. Sunnyland, which is where we got oh, the name from. Yes. Oh my gosh. So she was the sweetest thing ever. She let me take over her dining room table and I was like sewing these samples day after day where I was like sewing the leg into each other and I couldn't figure it out. And then finally one day I got it and I had all these samples together. And um, that was kind of how we got the first collection off the ground. Wow. And, and how long ago was that? That was years and years ago. And then we kind of put them away for a while. And then one day Gladys came to me and said, hey, remember those samples? You needed to get those manufactured, didn't you? And she had the money and the rest is history. Wow. But that's, I mean, now we're a lot more organized mm -hmm. than me sewing at Gladys's kitchen right, table. Right. <laughs> so, so you start out with drawing. Do you actually come up with how you want them to look? Yes. So we'll, we'll 
ping pong ideas back and forth, whether it be, um, you know, a style that we saw that we're into or an element of design that we saw somewhere. Most recently, I found some seed pods from a Royal Point Sienna that I want to turn into a pattern. Oh my gosh. Um, just really random mm-hmm. on that front. But once we get through that, we send um, our ideas, drawings, samples, measurements, that sort of thing to a manufacturer. Sometimes mm-hmm. I'll sew it myself and send it. Um, and then they come back and we go back and forth, mm-hmm. you know, tweaking details when it gets down to production. So the whole thing, like the last run that we did took about a year um, oh, from, wow. from when we first finalized our ideas and sent it to the company for them to get it perfect and get it back to us in quantity. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that is so cool. So then, then you get them back and then you have to prep them to actually sell. Yes. <laughs> and you just recently opened a store. Yes. So at first we were just online, mm-hmm. um, which was a very humbling experience. Um, but as we got out more in the community, we realized that it's something that nothing beats the in-person experience when it comes to swimwear shopping. Oh, for sure. Um, and specifically when you're introducing a new concept that I think people aren't necessarily familiar with, mm-hmm. you are very right. <laughs> <laughs> preaching to the choir here. Yes. <laughs> So I have a question. Um, I, I have a young daughter and they're all wearing, have you seen, I'm sure you have, cause you're in that area the the swimsuit triangle swimsuit upside down. Yes. <laughs> like what? Like talk about turning fashion on its head. What the heck? <laughs> so see, I'm actually in, super into things of course like that. You we are. preach that I all mean- the time. <laughs> well, like, because what? Part of sustainability, what we're trying to teach people is that you can wear things again. You can be Mm -hmm. an outfit repeater. You can tie your top a different way. You can, a lot of our pieces are reversible. You can wear it on the reverse side. That's awesome. Yes. So that's a huge part of sustainability that I think um, this younger generation coming up is really kind of grasping. They are. It doesn't need to be the hippy dippy Mm -hmm. of yesteryear that a lot of people kind of associate it with. Right. I love yeah. that. Well, now I have the answer, you know. Go her. I guess it's cool. <laughs> she doesn't do it, but all of her friends do. Send her my way. I'll show her a thing or two. <laughs> we've, we've actually talked about it. I'm like, you need to go check this out because before you actually had a store, you were in another, you had other stores that you put your merchandise in. Correct. Correct. Yes. So yeah. um, we were lucky enough. We got in a local boutique in Coconut Point called Local Honey. Uh, they were the first to give us a shot. And we also were attending a lot of pop-ups as well, Mm -hmm. too. That kind of was something where we found a lot of community in. But um, just through being in those stores, we realized that there's nothing better than being in person with somebody. That is awesome. If your closet's overflowing, or maybe your kids' closets are as well, or maybe you just want to redecorate your home. If you're wondering what to do with all that stuff that you've accumulated, bring it all to True Fashionistas or even ship it to them for free and they'll sell your unwanted items for you. They take away all the hassle by doing all the work and all you have to do is sit back and collect your money. Plus, it's extra money in the bank for all those presents that you'd like to buy yourself. You can reach to the, reach out to them online at truefashionistas.com, come into the store or check them out on Facebook or Instagram at truefashionistas.com. Hi friends, we're back again with Samantha Meisner. Am I saying your last name right? You Meisner. are, yeah. Because I always know I spelled it wrong. <laughs> Meisner, and we're chatting about her swimsuit line and now we're going to talk a little bit about entrepreneurship, okay? So- being a young designer and being in the fashion industry, what were some of the challenges that were presented to you when you first started your business? So how long is this segment <laughs> exactly? Trust me, I've been there and I, I just, it's nice to hear it from someone else because your journey could have been different than mine, could have been different than everybody's. <laughs> well, give us some challenges and how you overcame them. So one of our biggest ones, um, when we were getting ready to launch, uh, COVID was also getting ready to launch. So we definitely had to put everything on pause for a little bit, which meant that we were going to be launching a swimwear line in the dead of winter. Mm -hmm. So (laughs) yeah, we understandably. Yeah. So what we did is we didn't, you know, we didn't give it up. Uh, we cut our collection basically in half. We dialed it back a lot. Um, and we got ready. We, we ended up launching in November of 2020. Okay. Um, so it was a little bit later than we thought. And, you know, we kind of tried to use that time to get our, you know, get our finances straight. Mm-hmm. Um, we're pretty much self-funded on all this. We've taken loans, um, but most of it is all coming mm-hmm. out of our own pocket. So we tried to use that time to just pivot and save up a little bit more. And, 
And eventually we did get back on track where now we're releasing stuff Mm -hmm. in summer where it makes sense. (laughs) Right. But you know, I've always found in life and in business and everything, it doesn't happen to you. It happens for you. Right. So there's always a reason why it happened the way that it did. For sure. And, and honestly, I don't know if we would have opened a store at this point in time, if all of the things hadn't clicked from that Mm -hmm. point forward, you know, from starting at a later point. So it's really, it has, I mean, everything ends up being a blessing in disguise eventually. It sure does. It sure does. So, so COVID was a big one. COVID was a huge one. Yes. Um, other challenges along the way, like we did our own website. Um, Oh, I know how challenging that could be. <laughs> that could be its own whole conversation. Yes. And without going too far into it, it's funny how the simplest things on there, like for instance, we kept getting these messages from Google that was telling us that our website was no longer going to show on search mm-hmm. engines because something was incorrect. And we spent days and hours and the fix ended up being a simple call um, to Gladys's cousin, funny enough. Mm-hmm. And she had been through the same thing. And so she was like, oh, I know what you need to do. And it took us maybe five minutes yeah. to fix it. It's right in front of your face, mm-hmm. but you just don't yes. <laughs> see it. So building the website was definitely a very humbling experience. It can be very tricky for sure. <laughs> for sure. What else? What else have you encountered that, that somebody else may learn from? I mean, I would say don't underestimate the value of community. Mm-hmm. I think at first we were kind of hiding behind the computer, um, doing a lot of stuff online, and there really wasn't that connection point. And then I called Gladys one day and I was like, get in your car. We're going to go to this (laughs) pop-up event. It's at a garden. It was in the middle of the summer. It was raining. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Like all these things together. And I'm like, we're going out there. So we set up a table and it was amazing because all the people we ended up meeting were telling us, oh, yeah, you can go over to this event here and I'm going to this one next week. And why don't you call Mm -hmm. this girl? She can help you with what's wrong with your website. And it just it completely changed the game for us. I think just because you have an online thing. I mean, obviously, now we have a storefront, but just because you have an online thing doesn't mean you can't connect in your local community. I think that was huge for us because at first we really weren't connecting with people in a real way. And that's really what it's about, whether you're online or offline. It doesn't matter. It's about connecting with people. It's about getting in their world and figuring out, you know, what makes them tick. Exactly. And that that completely changed the landscape for us once we started kind of embracing that. I love that. I mean, the power of community is definitely a lot of times overlooked. You know, your community does so much for you and there's so much that you can do for your community. But not everybody always sees it. No, we we had this whole vision that we were just going to be online and at the beach selling bikinis. And I don't know what we thought. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's very, very cool. The whole sustainability and, um, you know, it's it's so prominent and so apropos to be in the here and now. Because like you said, the younger generation, they are really embracing sustainability. In a really big way too. And that's kind of um, something that we tried to embrace with the storefront. It's not just our brand and the storefront. Mm -hmm. We brought in other local businesses, other sustainable businesses, um, businesses that are kind of turning their industry on its head in some way that, you know, benefits the environment. And we, once we started looking, there were so many different companies and communities we found that are trying to do different things like that. And we thought, wouldn't it be great if we could, you know, connect them in some way in a store Mm -hmm. and living in a beach town, right? (laughs) The rest is history, right? It's very cool. I just, one of my very first podcasts was with a sustainability expert. I watched it. (laughs) Uh, And I mean, we talked about composting and all these things that you can do that, you know, back in the day, we'd be like, really? I am not going to do that. But even living in a beach town, you There's different practices that you pick up that you go, you know what? I have to do this because it's going to directly affect that manatee or that dolphin. And you don't think about that every day, especially if you're someone like me who grew up in the country. You know, we had all this piece of land to ourselves and it wasn't a big deal. But you're affecting more than just, it's bigger than you, right? Exactly. Even something as simple as people don't realize, like they'll come here on vacation with their kids and, you know, you buy a bag of sand toys, Mm -hmm. but obviously you're not going to take that back in your luggage because it's massive. So it ends up getting left at the hotel or it's really cheap material. So we find the plastic hunks Mm -hmm. all over the sand or you see a seagull trying to pick at it because they think it's food. 
I mean, from working on the beach for many years, I've oh, seen yes. all these things. And so like in our store, we found a compact kit that was made out of high grade um, silicone mm-hmm. and recycled plastic and it all packs together so you can take it home with you oh my your gosh, luggage. That's awesome. So just simple things like that. Like you don't have to, you don't have to tell your kids, oh, you, you can't have plastic sand toys. Like, right. no, they're fun. We all played with them as mm-hmm. kids. It's just shifting how we think about how we consume those things. And, and I think that's where we can really make a difference. And it doesn't have to be so granola and... <laughs> What we used to think of it. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, this is such awesome information. Sam, if our guests want to get a hold of you or they want to shop your line, how do they do so? Yes. You can either come visit us in store in the Bayshore Arts District or we are online at sunnylandswim.com and also on Instagram and Facebook. And I've seen your Instagram posts. They're awesome. Oh, thank you. I'm like, if only I could look that great in a swimsuit. (laughs) Come on down. I will find one for you. (laughs) That is fabulous. Thank you so much again for being on our our podcast today. Thank you so much again for having me, Jen. My pleasure. And thanks again for tuning in to the Fashionista Life. I'm Jennifer Johnson, and this has been brought to you by True Fashionistas. Make your day fabulous.